1982, Coach Wayne Harden put the finishing touches on what has become the most successful era in Temple University history. When he announced his retirement, an exhaustive search began for a capable successor. It culminated in the appointment of former Alabama assistant Bruce Arians. Well, gentlemen of the press, it is my honor to address you today as the head coach of Temple University. We're going to try and continue this program at the excellent level it has been in the past under a great coach. We will try and continue producing the great student athletes that Temple University has produced over the past and try and get the, the ball rolling here in Philadelphia again. At the end of 1982, Temple followers found themselves at a crossroads, reflecting back on a proud tradition and looking forward in anticipation of a new beginning. The Owls began the 1982 season against powerful Penn State. In facing the team that would eventually win the national championship, Coach Harden hoped the character of his team would emerge early. He got his wish as the Temple defense kept a potentially explosive Penn State offense in check most of the afternoon. Just as pleasing was the performance of junior quarterback Tim Reardon. In his first starting assignment, Reardon proved to be a capable field general, throwing for two touchdowns against the nationally ranked Nittany Lions defense. Although Penn State won the game, Temple proved it was capable of playing at the highest level of national competition. The following week at Syracuse, Tim Reardon would test his passing touch in the rarefied air of the Carrier Dome. It didn't take long for number 14 to establish command of the line of scrimmage. Late in the first quarter, junior Brian Slade exploded off left tackle for 20 yards, carrying all the way to the 10-yard line. Two plays later, it was reared and again making good things happen for the cherry and white. Senior Reuben McCoy's touchdown grab gave Temple the early seven to nothing lead. On the next Syracuse possession, a fired up owl front line forced the passer to leave his protection and become easy prey for Temple's ball hungry linebackers. Jay Gicker's fumble recovery set up a second scoring thrust. Running back Sherman Myers repaid the defense for its efforts with a 28-yard advance deep into enemy territory. When the drive stalled, steady Bob Clouser hit a 32-yard field goal and Temple led 10 to nothing. In the third quarter, Reardon again revved the offense into high gear. Joe Bianco's touchdown plunge preserved an owl lead, but the Orangemen were undaunted and came back with two quick scores. Again, Reardon answered the challenge, this time finding tight end Scott Adrian wide open over the middle. The play went for 44 yards, putting Temple in front 23 to 18. As time ticked away in the fourth quarter, Owl defenders tightened their grasp on the orange attack. When Anthony Young finally held on to this errant Syracuse pass, the last threat had been wiped out and the Temple victory celebration began. The 23 to 18 win was a glorious team victory but special credit was awarded to the game's most valuable player, quarterback Tim Reard.
As the season progressed, it became apparent that the Owls possessed a potent offensive arsenal. With the passing of Reardon to receivers like number 80, Reuben McCoy, and number 33, Reggie Brown, coupled with a solid ground attack, this team could move the ball against the best defenses in college football. The most impressive efforts of the year came in a 55-point outburst against Louisville and the 41 points scored to overwhelm the University of Cincinnati. The character and spirit of Temple's defensive unit developed from the leadership and superior play of team captain number 97, Vinnie Minnie. His all-out effort and commitment to team goals served as an inspiration not only to the defense, but to his teammates on the offense as well. As the season progressed, the young defensive unit gained maturity and confidence. The secondary sparkled against nationally ranked Pittsburgh, totally frustrating All-America Dan Marino. The Owls followed up their effort against the Panthers with a 41-7 trouncing of Cincinnati, which set up a veteran stadium showdown with West Virginia. Homecoming 1982 featured the Mountaineers against the Owls on a beautiful November day. Nice to see you. Hope you enjoy yourselves. The new president of Temple University, Peter Leocorus, took pride in welcoming alumni who had returned for the occasion. Hi, how are you? An avid supporter of intercollegiate athletics, Leah Corus regards sports as an integral part of the university experience. It's a cohesive force to have intercollegiate athletics and the football team in particular. It's cohesive for an otherwise diverse and pluralistic institution. Just as by providing legal services to the poor as law students do, part of an extracurricular activity, so too football team players develop a sense of excellence and participate in merging the direct academic with the indirect or co-curricular enterprises which are part of our total university life. At Temple, the football team not only gets moral support from President Leah Corus, but it gets vocal support as well. Hey, move! move! Number 72! Go get him! Holding! Holding! Guy's holding back there! Run back! Go, go, Anthony! Go! 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 Go, Anthony! Go! Go! Let it go, Anthony! I wanted to be a, a big league baseball player and did not have the ability. I then wanted to be a sports writer. Then I wanted to be a lawyer for athletes. I accomplished none of those goals, so did the next best thing, and that is to become president of the university and have 28 teams. Not just one, but 28 teams to cheer for. In Peter Leocorus, Temple University has a uniquely qualified president who is deeply committed to making Temple a major force in the community and the nation. The large homecoming crowd witnessed a stellar first half performance by the Owls. A well-executed ball control drive concluded in textbook fashion on a scoring pass to flanker Reuben McCoy. Temple jumped on top seven to nothing. Owl defenders dominated the line of scrimmage and limited the Mountaineers to just two field goals in the first half. Temple continued to assert itself in the third quarter and moved closer to a possible score. Now, inside West Virginia territory, Reardon carried the ball into the heart of the defense. To the dismay of Temple fans, Reardon was injured on the play and would not return. Suddenly, the Owls' momentum was gone. 
and bull-bound West Virginia gained the lead. Although Temple regrouped and fought for a late touchdown, it was not enough. The Owls fell 20 to 17. For 13 seasons, Wayne Harden brought dedication, class, and success to Temple football. In that time, he won more games than any other coach in Temple history. He also guided the Owls to their finest season ever, when in 1979, Temple won 10 games, including the Garden State Bowl, and ended that year ranked 17th in the nation. Before the final game of the 1982 season, Coach Harden announced his retirement. And so ended a golden era of Temple football. Coach Harden loved the game, was a master strategist, but most of all, he was a winner in every sense of the word. When Coach Harden retired, we made a public announcement that Temple University would make an effort to get the best coach available in America. We set up a committee uh, made up principally of people who had a football background. We received applications from all over the country, probably a total of between 65 and 70. They were screened very carefully. And there's no question in our mind that we have come up with what we consider the best football coach available for Temple University at this time in our, in our history. The committee's choice was Bruce Arians, a talented assistant to Bear Bryant in Alabama, who projects confidence and wisdom beyond his years. I'm talking about producing winners in the classroom, in the city, in the community, and on the football field. I think you can't separate any of the three. Bruce Arians' first priority as the new head coach will be the athletes already at Temple, those returning players who have already earned their place on the cherry and white. Nine starters from the 1982 defensive unit return next season, including the squad's leading tackler, linebacker Tom Kilkenny, and All-America candidate defensive back Anthony Young. On offense, three of the Owls' explosive running backs will also return, including 1982's leading rusher, Harold Hahn, who averaged 5.4 yards per carry, gaining more than 850 yards on the season. Coach Arians will also be blessed by the presence of quarterback Tim Reardon. In 1982, Reardon completed 63.6% of his passes for more than 1,800 yards. Perhaps even more impressive was his field presence and team leadership. To ensure the ongoing success and further development of Temple football, Coach Arians will initiate a unique recruiting program designed to bring the best athletes available to Temple University. Our philosophy will be the same as Temple's, Acres of Diamonds. We'll try and take the players from the locality right here within a two-hour drive and build a national championship football team. Those type of players who show the character and a winning tradition in their high school programs and bring them to Temple, one where their families can watch them grow, be in the stands, be close by, where they can interact and uh, be a part of the Temple family. The young men sought by Coach Arians are a special breed, possessing not only great athletic ability, but also a sense of dedication and a commitment to excellence. At Temple University, we're looking for winners. Young men with high character, who will be recommended strongly by their high school coaches, principals, fellow students. Young men who have athletic ability to play major college football, but can also handle major college classwork. The young men who wear the cherry and white in 1983 will enjoy a rare opportunity to prove themselves against college football's finest, as the Owl schedule includes five bowl teams and five top 20 teams, including the defending national champion. 
Indeed, Temple football has reached a crossroads, one at which loyal fans look back in appreciation of the effort put forth by this 1982 team. And at the same time, peer forward into the future, placing their hopes and dreams in the capable hands of new coach Bruce Arians. It's an exciting time to be at Temple University, where in 1983, the football team will begin its newest and most glorious era in a long and proud tradition.